Hi everyone, welcome back to Study Planet. And today is day three of our Google AI intensive program, and it's getting super interesting. In this video, we will learning about agent sessions, how to add memory to your agent, and how to fix common cold lab issues that everyone facing in today's assessment assignment. So stay with me till the end. This video will really help you complete your day three task without errors because i'm running lots of people are getting errors like uh, retry configuration not defined or version not saving i'm ran into the same problems the troubleshooting guide really helped me so if you see those errors remember three quick fixes restart your runtime mount your google drive and add your secret key properly so before asking your doubts, try these steps yourself and check the troubleshooting guide first. It helped me a lot and it will probably help you resolve the issues faster. If you skip watching the whole video, you might miss a single step and that one missed step can cause the error and totally confuse you. If your file won't save, don't panic. Refresh the page and then run the notebook cell by cell from top to bottom one by one, one by one and most errors disappear. In this video, I will show exactly how I run the notebook and explain why each code block is used. So you will know what step we are doing and what comes next. Don't skip, watch the full video and follow along. Let's fix these errors together. So let's get started. Day three of Google AI intensive program, task one. And we will look at the Kaggle notebook for agent sessions. And a lot of people are asking where should I check my code or why I am getting errors. So in this video, I will show you exactly how to open the notebook or check your code and fix errors and start the session step by step. So this, this is the Kaggle notebook. You can find it under day 3A agent sessions. All the instructions and code are already provided below the page. Scroll down, you will see the code blocks and uh, their outputs. When, when you click edit my copy it opens in collab mode where you can run the code yourself after clicking run check your output right here if it's correct or wrong uh, you will see it instantly in google kaggle notes if something fails and you get an error scroll up and check carefully is the above code correct and is the below code correct uh, is output is correct did i miss any line or bracket it's your responsibility to check these details most of the time a small missing line causes the entire error uh, accidentally you can delete your cells and you are get, getting confused now let's let's start our session agent sessions are part of memory management part one sessions help the agent to store and recall memory and today we learn what is session, how to use it in your agent and how to build stateful agents with sessions and events, how to persist session in a database and how to use context compaction and share session state effectively. And, and this is the first off of day three. So there is no submission required for this notebook. We all know this. As usual, follow the same steps, install dependencies, configure your API key. Click edit my copy, wait until all cells are restored. Now you will see an add input button. Uh, when you first open collab, click on add-ons secrets. Here you will notice a secret label. It might saying something generic. Instead of that, add your Google API key. Go to Gemini AI Studio, copy your API key, then come back to collab. Click add secret and paste it here. Click save. If the secret label doesn't change, the key isn't saved. So always double check. We use this Google API key to hide our credentials safely inside Collab. Now we will install our dependencies. Type and run pip install google hyphen adk. Wait for about one to one and a half minutes. Uh, once it finishes successfully, restart the kernel so the new package updates. Important note, instead of run all cells, choose restart and run up to selected cell. Running all cells at once can overload the server and cause errors. Then continue running one by one cell and check the output carefully. 
Once all the dependencies are installed successfully, the next step is to restart your kernel. To do that, click on three dots in the top right corner of the notebook. Now, instead of clicking on run all cells, choose restart and run up to select a cell. Running all cells at once can overload the server and cause unnecessary errors. After clicking restart and run up to selected cell, you will notice that only that particular cell is running, not the entire notebook. That exactly what we want. Next, we will continue by running each cell one by one carefully. Run one cell, check the output, then move to the next. Once everything looks good, we are satisfied and ready to move on. We are using the command pip install google adk to install all the dependencies. After this package is installed successfully, we need to paste our code snippet that was produced by secret. Important, don't skip this step. If you forgot to paste the secret code snippet right below the pip install google iPhone adk cell, after restarting the kernel, you will get an error. So make sure to paste the secret key generated, secret code snippet generated by the secrets, then run the cells first. After importing our secret key and installing all the required dependencies, now let's move forward to the most interesting part, importing the ADK components and understanding the helper functions used in our code. Our Gemini API key setup is already completed. We use this small script, import OS from Kaggle secrets, import the user secrets client. This short block of code securely connects our Kaggle notebook to the Gemini API. By using this user secrets client, our API key remains hidden inside Kaggle secret storage. No one can else can view or copy it. That's exactly why we use this method. And it keeps our credentials safe while still letting our code access the Gemini API whenever needed. Now that Gemini API key setup is complete, let's move on and uh, import the ADK components. These components act as the code building blocks of our agent and make the entire session management process possible. Helper function. In this helper function, run session runner method is there. It manages the entire conversation flow creating or retrieving sessions, processing queries, and streaming responses. It supports both single queries and multi-turn conversations in sequence. That's why we are using this helper function. I am running each cell one by one to avoid errors and see clear outputs. Now the helper function is defined successfully and the code executed without issues. Now we are going to run configure retry options code. Sometimes when we send a request to the AI, it might fail because the server is busy or we have hit a usage limit. If our code fails to connect or the AI is busy, the system will automatically again try again after a short gap. We don't have to run it again manually. It tries for us. That's why we are writing this code. A session means shorter memory for the AI. It remembers what you're saying during one chart, but forgets everything once the chart ends. Imagine you are in class and your teacher teaches one lesson today. The teacher remembers everything that happened during that class, like who answered and what was discussed. But the next day, when a new class starts, it's like a fresh start. That one class is equal to only one session. So the AI also remember the conversation only while the session is running. Once we start a new chart, it forgets. Our brain also works like this. Short-term memory is what we remember for a few minutes. Long-term memory is what we keep for days or years. For AI, sessions are the short-term memory and memory storage is long-term memory. Now we will see what is inside a session. Each session has two main parts, events and state. Events are what happens in the chart and state is the notebook where the agent keeps small notes or data. Example, user input that's your message and the agent responses the AI replays tool call when the AI uses an external app to find answers. So basically events record everything happened during a chart. And what is session state? Session state is like a scratch pad. The AI is temporary workspace. It saves quick details so the agent can use them later in the same chart. Session state is like a scratch pad, the AI temporary workspace. It is a temporary workspace. 
Now we will see how sessions are managed. The good thing is we don't have to manage all that ourselves. ADK gives us two, two tools, the session manager and the session runner. The session manager works like a storage room. It creates, saves and retrieves your conversations whenever needed. And session runner, the session runner is like a delivery person. It manages the flow, taking your questions, sending it to the agent and bringing back the replay. And Okay everyone, from here the notebook continues with more advanced parts like building the first stateful agent, testing persistence and database sessions. But if I start explaining each and every code here, the video will become too long and boring for you. So today I just wanted to give you a quick glance what is a session and what is memory and how agents actually remember things. Because only doing the task is not enough. Understanding why we do it makes us more interested in learning. In tomorrow's live stream, they will explain everything in detail. So don't miss that. This video is just to help you get the idea and prepare your mind for the next concept. Now all my sales have run successfully, no errors at all. Please don't skip this part because saving your file is the most important step. If your code lab shows all sales executed successfully, that means your code is ready to be saved. To save your work, just click on save version. Sometimes it takes around two to three minutes to save completely. So don't worry, be patient. If it fails the first time, just click on save version. Again, you will notice it creates version two, version three and so on. Keep trying until it shows successfully saved. That's how you make sure your file is safely stored. Thank you so much for watching this video till the end. I hope it was helpful for you to understand how to run, check and save your Colab notebook properly. If you found this video helpful, please drop your feedback in the comments. I really want to know if Study Planet is helping you to learn better. And don't forget to like, share and subscribe to Study Planet. It really motivates me to make more helpful videos for you. Thank you once again. Thank you for watching.